However, what I do want to represent with you or talk to you guys about is, well, how can we understand though why that is the graph? Like how does that graph make sense? Or how are we sure that that graph is what secant looks like? So there's a couple things to keep in mind. So if I wanted to graph y equals secant of x, the first thing I want to do to understand secant is think about, well, what is most related to secant? And that's the cosine graph, correct? Secant and cosine are reciprocal functions, right? So we know that the, uh, the cosine, of a uh, cosine of an angle in a triangle is adjacent over hypotenuse. The secant of that angle is hypotenuse over adjacent. A, for a given point on the unit circle, the cosine is x. For a given point on the circle, the secant is 1 over x. So they're just a flipped version of each other. That word flipped is going to become very important for us. So let's go and sketch cosine, because that's what we did last class period. And if you were halfway paying attention to last class period, then hopefully you remember that we had some important points on the cosine function. We started at 1, had an intercept at pi halves, had a minimum value at pi, pi halves, and 2. And you might say, yeah, I kind of remember that graph in my notes, but I can't really remember how we got those points again. So I say, well, remember, what we did was we took the unit circle. Now, it took us, or took many students a long time to evaluate the first quadrant. But that's basically how we found those remaining points. But, but, but for the points that I just presented here, let's verify these. Rather than, rather than going back to all the points in the unit circle, let's just focus on these points right here. Um. Okay, so remember, cosine of an angle for is the point is the x coordinate on the unit circle. Excuse me. So the cosine of zero is one. The cosine of pi halves is zero. Pi halves zero. Cosine of pi is negative one. Cosine of three pi over two zero. And then cosine of two pi is one. Right? So you guys one. So you guys can see how we did that. And for those of you that were here last class period, you noticed that, oh my god, we did all of those the same thing, and like we did that. So based on this information, though, we can actually now start to develop some things about cosecant. Because remember, cosecant is just the reciprocal, I'm sorry, secant. Secant is just the reciprocal of cosine. So instead of doing x, now let's do 1 over x. So over here, so for the cosecant, or sorry, I keep on messing this up. So for the secant of 0, that's 1 over 1, which is 1. So we're going to have a shared point. Now, actually, since I'm graphing cosine, since I'm graphing secant, I don't want to like confuse our secant graph with the cosine graph. So I'm just going to dash it. Okay. All right. Um, now let's go to pi halves. The secant of pi halves would be one over zero, which is undefined, and we represented undefined values last class period with the tangent function as asymptotes. So at pi halves, we have a vertical asymptote. Okay, And then we go to the angle pi. 1 over negative 1 is negative 1. So we have another shared value. At secant of 3 pi over 2 is 1 over 0, which is, again, undefined. And then we have at 2 pi, again, we're going to have another shared value. So. Um, so now we have a kind of an idea of what the graph looks like, right? I mean, we at least have these asymptotes, and we have a coordinate point, so that's good. And really, to kind of fill in the rest of the graph, you can either now take my advice as far as that's what the graph looks like, um, or you could also use your thinking of like the flipped image, right? Remember, they're like flip x, 1 over x. Opposite over hypo uh, adjacent over hypotenuse, hypotenuse over adjacent. It's like the flipped image. So if I was just to like flip this graph like around, you can see I, to give a mirrored image of this graph, I would represent it like this. And again, if you really, really wanted to confirm this, you could also just figure out the points and do 1 over x for each one of these, find the decimal values, and then plot them. And guess what? You would get points that make up these parabolas. Okay? You would get these values that would make that up. 
But we don't need to do that, right? You guys can maybe, we can confirm that's good. And we're going to use graphing technology to confirm this as well, anyways. Um, so that's where the secant graph comes from. 